Hey, it's Wabbit. Good to be back with you. I'm going to do my best to keep this under 10 minutes. Uh, if you are not into iOS music making, if you understand that you don't need to waste your time getting into the weeds and connecting things, if you know not to sell stuff at Knee Jerk Reaction, then no need to continue on. I'm sharing my story, and I believe that there is someone out there that may need to hear this because we are human beings. And for those of us who are the mad scientists in our studio that spend countless hours trying to connect things, and especially in ways that maybe the manufacturer didn't intend, then I hope this helps you out. I almost sold the LPP or the Launchpad Pro is what I refer to now, the LPP. And it would have been a major mistake. So here's the deal. I am using the application up here on the iPad called Remix Live. And I can use the Launchpad Pro here. Let me touch it here. So this layout here mimics that. The Launch Control XL, I can program to adjust the faders, you know, knobs for various parameters. It's a fun combination. Now what's different is what is now in the middle of all this. I used to use a dongle to connect it up. It's this device here, the Audio 4C. I've talked about it uh, in another video. To me, it's a personal game changer. Keyword to me. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about this device here in this video. That will come for another time. But what I was having an issue was, is underneath the desk here, out of the camera view, there is a 13-port USB hub where this device and the launch control and some other things are plugged into it, and that is going into the back of the Audio 4C. Typical interface to have a USB hub with MIDI devices. When I went to turn everything on, when I was trying to configure and remix live, I could not get this thing to show up. And long story short, I gave up. I had also come out of a eight-hour session here in the studio. I'm being sarcastic there where I was doing other things in here that was involving MIDI routing and audio routing. And I've been messing with that thing for about the past month or two, and it's been driving me bananas. So it was late at night. I was frustrated. I'm like, you know what? You're out the door. Because I brought over the Launchpad Mini, its little brother, and it was able to connect. So I'm just assuming it's this device's fault, and I didn't think anything about how powerful this thing was. And... I was also stepping into the redundant territory game because I'm looking at a very powerful sequencer that I have in the Oxy-1. I'm looking at even the key step over here is a very fun and powerful sequencer. I'm like, you know what? You're done. You're out. And then I don't know what happened. I mean, I even post this thing on some Discord group. I'm like, hey, I'll give you the 10% discount of the lowest price on Reverb. You know, this thing is for you and got no bites. I began to do some more research, some more reading, and figured it out. And bottom line, it was me. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. Again, I'm not going to go into details into the story. I will say this. If, if you are one of the few people out there that uses this setup, then let me know, and I can do another video because it's very dry. It's very boring. Boring, it can be very long. But bottom line, I read the manual. Now, the manual included watching videos. It included doing some research. And I figured it out. And I quickly <laughs> removed the post. But then beyond that, I then started to revisit, okay, some other things I can do with the LPP. Four sequencers that it has built in there. I'm like, oh, yeah, it's got MIDI in and two out. YouTube started showing me other videos about using this with hardware. And suddenly it was like a love affair re reborn. So here is the moral of the story. Take everything that I say worth a grain of salt. As I said, if you are that mad scientist that is just heads down trying to make things work and something isn't working, step outside, put some sun on your face, go out, touch grass, whatever the kids say. Take a break. Before selling something, if you feel like it's not working, read the manual. And again, the manual can be various things. And if all that fails, put it in a drawer and hang on to it. The worst thing you can have happen is sell something 
and either have regret or figure out something later and it's too late. It's as simple as that. Again, for many, this is common sense. Yet I found myself buried in this rabbit hole of MacGyvering stuff and connecting things, and i got to make this work. And it would have been a bad move. Now, here's the other cool thing. So what if I have multiple sequencers here in the hutch or the studio? You may have multiple synthesizers in your room or your studio. So this whole argument about we have too much needs to go away. For me, I don't know how to play a musical instrument to save my life, but a sequencer I know how to use, and it allows me to make noise. You may know how to play an instrument, and you can make some noise. End of the day, except for the few who are just about connecting stuff and never want to make noise, and there's nothing wrong with that, for the rest of us, what are we in this for? To have fun, make some music, jam, have a good time, share with others. And this was a very valuable lesson for me. Yes, I've sold things in the past. Yes, they've been based on redundancy. And I've had no regrets because in those particular cases, they were just not meant for. A, a great example, I've got the MC707 and the TR8S. I had the 101 and the 6S. Very powerful, very capable devices. But I was not going out to the beach. I was not going out to the woods. And they were not really getting any use case. They found great homes. I have no regrets. The MPC Live, the Machine uh, MK3, powerful devices, but they just did not fit. Now, granted, yes, I was at a different headspace at that time, but they just are not workflows for me. So sometimes it is okay to move on from things. But in a situation like this where you have something that has a lot of capability – to use some of the reasons that I was, it's too big, it's chunky, and, and let me be honest with you. Because I'm doing a very niche case thing, it's very understandable for somebody to say, wow, you were going to get rid of this over an app called Remix Live where you're using presets. And, and again, I know this because I've seen people say, this isn't making music, this isn't real thing. You know what? Enough of that. But I can understand and I'm glad that I did not get rid of this because of one little thing that really was my fault. I did not thoroughly do my research. So that's all I got. Like I said, I want to keep it under 10 minutes. I'm just kind of now rambling on. I really want to try and respect your time. I do have some videos coming that are going to go over some things I've been alluding to in some of my posts on the community tabs and, and some discords about – what I've been doing here in the hutch has really been getting stuff wired up, audio and MIDI. I've learned so much. It's a very bizarre setup, but it works, and, I, and I'm happy with it. With that being said, I want to play more. So my goal is to start putting out some content where I'm actually making some noise with this mess that I put together. And then along the way, I can break down what I've been doing. Now, again, it's not to say you have to do anything the way I'm doing it's just really to kind of help maybe inspire people who are getting into the space or maybe if you're also in the space, you can also help me out. Or, you know, that's, that's the beautiful thing about this space is we share ideas. We're like, oh, or you may see a piece of kit or you may piece, see a, a stand or, or something that can kind of help out. I don't want to really focus on the gear per se because we all know what that is. So I don't want to do any of that kind of thing. But I do want to share what I've been doing because um, it's been a lot of fun, even though I – said it's been frustrating. Thank you very much for your time. I hope something in here helped or inspired you. And uh, get out there, have a lot of fun, stay safe, keep your head on a swivel. And I do hope to catch you in another one. Until then, keep jamming.